Tyrese Halliburton wasn't upset he fell to 12th in the draft because of how happy the Kings were to get him. But even they never predicted how good he would be. The last two tournament games, Halley has 53 points, 28 assists with no turnovers. He hit back-to-back -back daggers against the Celtics and Bucks. So why did 11 teams pass on him in the draft? What's crazy is draft analysts loved him. The Ringer said, genius playmaker who can be a major building block of a contending team. ESPN, one of the highest basketball IQs of any player in the draft. Creative passer who empowers teammates and makes the game easy. That is all true, but now he is getting compared to Steve Nash, who loved to set up his teammates but could score at any time if they needed. Clutch in the fourth quarter. So 11 teams could have had a future MVP, but said, no thanks. Why? Well, most stars who fall in the draft, like Steph or Steve Nash, were underrated in high school. But Tyrese had a lot more than college rankings in his way. To understand his fall in the draft, you have to know what happened leading up to that night. He's from a small town called Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and was obsessed with Magic Johnson growing up. Tyrese watched YouTube of Magic, game film, documentaries. He said, I saw qualities that Magic had, like the smile on his face, the joy he played with. My dad sees Magic as the basketball side of positivity, so he wants me to be that way. But he became so loyal to his teammates, it was almost his downfall. Only the best AAU teams are invited to play on the shoe circuit, which is where the big colleges scout. Tyrese had a chance to be on one of those great teams, but refused to stay with his local AAU team he joined in eighth grade. So when other players were getting scholarships early, Tyrese had nothing. His football coach approached him and said, look, the basketball thing obviously isn't working. Why don't you switch sports? And Tyree said, fine, give me two months, and if I don't have a D1 scholarship, I will play football. But right on cue, like it was fate, he got his first offer from IUPUI, a small school no one's heard of, but it was a start. From there, he got better, won Gatorade Player of the Year, state title as a senior, but no one noticed. Zero offers from big universities and was ranked outside the top 150 in the country. So he went to college at Iowa State, but there was talk of him sitting out a year to develop. His dad told him, go up to the best player on day one and challenge him, which he did to Lindell Wigginton, the 34th player in the country. His coach was so impressed that when Lindell got injured, Tyrese got to start. He was so good as a freshman, people started talking NBA draft. And it was such a shock that people were finally recognizing him. Tyrese was like, uh, I'm not ready for that. I am going back to school. But that summer, Team USA invited him to play with the U19 team. There were guys like Cade Cunningham and Jalen Green and Scotty Barnes, and they made Tyrese a starter. Now he felt like he belonged and took another leap as a sophomore. Tyree scored 15 a night with six assists and two steals. The only other 40% from three guys to do that were Jay Williams, who went number two in the draft, and Chris Paul. So the analysts loved him and projected Tyrese to go as high as number four. But the 2020 draft was weird. It was the middle of the pandemic, so teams had limited information to scout. And everyone was forced to work out by themselves for NBA teams. And if you've seen Tyrese shoot, you know how weird his form is. So if he's working out with no teammates, it's kind of underwhelming. The negatives on Tyrese was that he was too skinny and could not get to the rim like Ja Morant. So some people wrongly thought he was high IQ, but not a game changer. So draft night came and everyone was at home watching, including the picks because of COVID. Number one, Anthony Edwards, great pick. Number two, the Warriors wanted Tyrese or James Wiseman, and they made one of the worst choices the last 10 years. Not only is Tyrese a potential future MVP, Wiseman could be out of the league. Steve Kerr regretted the pick immediately, called his friend Kings coach Luke Walton and said, do not mess with his awkward shot. The Warriors front office loves it. Number three was the Hornets who took LaMelo Ball, which has worked out. Number four was another bust, Patrick Williams. Chicago had no true point guard at the time, except for maybe Kobe White. If their GM gets fired, this'll be one of the first things people bring up. But at five and six, 
Tyrese called the Cavaliers and Hawks and said, do not draft me. They were both set at point guard. Cavs had Darius Garland and Colin Sexton, Hawks with Trey Young and Kevin Herter. They didn't have to listen to Tyrese, but they did pass on him. At seven, the Pistons wanted a point guard. It was between Tyrese and Killian Hayes. They felt Hayes had a higher ceiling. And because they were years away from winning, they took the 18-year-old Frenchman. It's been a disaster because despite a few good games recently, he's been a bust. But at eight, the Knicks have two huge regrets. First, people were begging them to take Tyrese, like Stephen A. Smith and Carmelo Anthony, but they wanted Obi Toppin to replace Julius Randle. Then, a call came in. The Dallas Mavericks wanted Tyrese, so they offered Jalen Brunson the number 18 pick, Josh Green, and the 31st pick to move up. But the Knicks loved Obi so much they said no. Well, he is off the team just three years later. Ouch. Then Tyrese got a call at nine. It was the Wizards telling him he was their pick. It was a shock because he didn't work out for Washington, never even spoke for him. The thinking must have been to replace John Wall with a new young point guard. But all of a sudden, they called back and said, never mind, we're taking Denny Avia. Maybe just then the offer to trade for Russell Westbrook fell in their laps and they missed on Tyrese. Next was the Phoenix Suns, who had Chris Paul at point guard, but he was 37 years old. Tyrese made a lot of sense, but they had just extended campaign and were about to extend Landry Shaman. The Suns ended up taking Jalen Smith, who is one of their worst picks ever. If they take Tyrese, they probably win the 2021 chip. Now there's no great story of why the Spurs passed on him at 11. They just thought Devin Vassell was the better player and they were right, he is really good. I mean, he just got a $146 million extension, but he is no Tyrese Halliburton. So the Kings took him at 12, but one year later, the unthinkable happened. They passed on him, trading for Damanis Sabonis. Tyrese was shocked because Sacramento rarely hits on picks and never has a player who wants to be there like him. At the time, I was angry, angry for a long time, mixed with sadness. But now looking back on it, it was the best thing for my career. But was it a mistake? The Kings needed size at the time, and Sabonis was the only all-star center they could realistically get. Now, a lot of people say it was a win-win. Last year, the Kings finally had a fun season for their fans. But be honest, people saying that are either Kings fans or NBA media who are afraid to piss off their sources. Yes, it was a mistake. The Kings potentially wasted 15 plus years of a franchise player for what, five years of first round exits? Eventually, like the beam, will get old. I know that will get pushed back in the comments, but look at Sabonis on the Pacers. Did anyone care about them? No, they were a miserable team about to blow it up. But swap him for Tyrese, and they are the talk of the NBA. Before Tyrese, they were boring. Miles Turner wanted to get traded. Now, there is a vibe around that team because Tyrese is more than just a point guard. He is a connector who sets a culture just like his NBA idol, Magic Johnson. And speaking of draft mistakes, it's only been 11 games, but Scoot Henderson is having a really tough time. There are people online on Twitter right now who are using the bust word. So I had a look. Do they maybe have a point?